Turn to the unrest in Egypt. Protests are growing in size and severity, calling for the country's president to step down. Nearly 100 people have died, thousands more injured. And there's a scramble to get the Americans there out as soon as possible. Tonight, we're sitting down with a Rhode Island College professor who just returned, leaving her husband behind. Eyewitness News reporter Marilyn Scherer joins us for in-depth coverage tonight, live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom. A professor at Rhode Island College says years of oppression and limited freedom is what led to the unrest in Egypt, and she is hopeful it will lead to a democratic government. As millions of Egyptians continue their protests in the streets of Cairo to try and take over the government, a professor at Rhode Island College, who recently returned from Egypt on winter break, says she supports their rebellion and a transition toward democracy. I would love to be in the crowds, and I know people think that's crazy, that's insane, but I speak Arabic, my husband does, and I think people would so welcome an American walking with them. Professor Carolyn fleur Lavin teaches Arab Islamic culture in the West at REC. Her husband Robert is still in Egypt. She says this revolutionary uprising so far is relatively peaceful compared to others and that it's long overdue. I still have my fingers crossed that this is going to remain generally peaceful. Floor Lobin says the Egyptian people have been living in a security state under the military regime of President Hosni Mubarak for 30 years following the assassination of Anwar Sadat. She says Egyptians stopped being afraid and says social media has helped to inspire the rebellion. This is the new revolution, shall we say, of the 21st century. Pretty much, yeah, social media. It's youthful, it's overwhelmingly young people, which is why the government shut down the Internet and shut down uh, cell phones. And the, professor sa and the professor says the deaths and violence that we have seen taking place stems from the military opposition, which is run by the government and not the protesters. She says information is still getting out of Egypt, and she's hopeful to get a cell phone call from her husband soon. Reporting live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Marilyn Shera, Eyewitness News.